seen reports of uh, not just uh, local funds uh, buying up and, and switching out of Telstra, getting into resources now, but also US funds uh, stepping into the market here. What are you hearing? Well, the most unusual thing about today's trading was the amount of value going through the market. $5.5 billion being traded. And even in the first hour of trade, we knew something unusual was going on. Usually it's difficult for the Australian market to trade $1 billion in that first hour. But in that first hour of trade, we saw $1.5 billion being traded today, today, pointing to fund activity and in particular overseas activity. We've seen that Australian dollar back near that parity mark. The Aussie share market uh, underperforming its international peers over the last month and all that resulted in some international buying which helped support the market. In fact it was quite fascinating to watch although the job numbers uh, were impressive and it's quite understandable that funds would have kept on buying after those job numbers. They even bought through those weak China numbers. We saw some weak China trade numbers and usually we see the material sector being the worst hit after uh, indications that growth in China is slowing but today the best performing sector was the material space. We saw stocks like Fortescue up by 3%, Newcrest Mining up by 5.6% despite gold prices reaching a four-month low overnight, and Bargain Hunters also out in force. Some of the underperforming stocks of the market in the last few weeks and the last few months outperformers today. We saw one still up by 7.9%, Perseus Mining up by 7.7%, Ivanhoe, which has been down 65% in the last year, up by more than 7%, and EWC see also down by more than 80% in the past year, up by more than 7% as well. So bargain hunters outing for some good volumes coming through from international buying and the Australian market really defying those weak China numbers. Three that we were getting through as well from the banking sector. NAB today out with uh, cash earnings up 6% to around $2.8 billion. Julia, just looking at the, uh, the financials there as well, how did the market uh, react to this? Because it, it seemed that they were a little disappointed earlier on, but then uh, NAB didn't fare too badly by the close. No huge surprises here given that we did see the unaudited results coming out at the end of April when uh, NAB came out with its results of its UK uh, business review. So the NAB result um, was already out there in the market, $2.82 billion. That was of course below consensus when it was released. Consensus standing at $3 billion. I guess the net interest margin disappointing when you compare it to some of the other uh, big banks in that we did see the net interest margin, the group one, falling by nine basis points where the other banks have seen a fall around the six basis point mark. So we have seen a steep fall there and bad debt's also coming in slightly ahead of our expectations at $1.13 billion. But of course it is a transformational time for NAB as well. That UK business review that we saw at the end of April will see the bank retaining their retail and SME operations in the UK while transferring the commercial re uh, real estate off, uh, assets to the group's balance sheet and running those off. So it does look like NAB positioning itself with some of the more profitable parts of its business in hopes that it'll sell it off when market conditions are a bit better for a sell-off of its UK business. But today, really a lot of that news priced into the market. Uh, NAB still a little bit weak, down by 0.3% uh, by the end of the session. I mean, how do you rate the big four? Because, uh, you know, much has been made of NAB's campaign to, you know, promise to offer the, the lowest home loan variable rate. Uh, it's, it's campaign to try and uh, win customers off the, uh, the rest of the big four. How does it stack up? How's it working after today's results? It's been working well for NAB in terms of domestic market share that uh, it has the cheapest standard variable rate at 6.99%. But I guess in terms of the European crisis and how it might affect the B4 banks, it's a bit of a double-edged sword. We have a look at the net interest margin for NAB um, with a fall of nine basis points. About six basis points of that is due to funding costs. So of course if we do see the European crisis back in the spotlight, then it is going to impact on the net interest margin of the big four banks as funding costs rise. But the other side of the equation are European banks which are uh, recapitalizing over the next few months and they're really drawing back their business in Asia which is leaving a hole. So it's a quite an exciting time to be expanding into Asia. That's probably why ANZ is the pick of most analysts out there in the market because while the European banks are looking at shrinking their business and recapitalizing, uh, it leaves an opportunity for other banks to fill the gap in that Asia-Pacific region. So a bit of a double-edged sword Europe but we'll be watching that European uh, crisis very closely, especially in terms of those funding.